And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. God is good. God is good and all the time happy sabbath everyone it is an honor and a privilege to be in the house of god it is a double privilege for me to fellowship with you this way family members of missouri city baytown laporte and born again families wherever you are i believe you're connected somehow i cannot see you with the physical eye but i see you with the eye of faith because we must walk by faith and not by sight. Is there anyone present who is not a Seventh-day Adventist? May I see your hand? Ah, would you kindly stand? Tell us who you are. Yes, my good brother, what's your name? Curtis. Curtis, Curtis how are you? Good to see you. Where are you from? From here. And Curtis, who invited you? And her name is? Who? Levert. Laverne, Laverne, thank you very much for bringing this handsome man. Even with the mask, he's handsome. So we're grateful he's come. Brother Curtis, please come again sometime. Church, if you agree, say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. God bless you in every area of your life. I saw a hand to my right. Did I? Ah, what's your name? Cassandra. How are you? You look like a nice person. You are. Well, good, good. And God will help you with that. Where are you from, Cassandra? New Orleans, Louisiana. My wife is from Louisiana. She's a nice person, too. Yeah, oh, yes, she is. Oh, yes. Now, who invited you? Where are they? Somewhere around. Uh huh. Thank you very much for coming. And may God bless you place his hand of mercy upon your life and never remove it. Say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. You may be seated, my lovely sister. Now, there may be someone in the church that I cannot see. Where? 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 Oh, hi, my brother. Sorry for looking miles beyond you. How are you? What's your name? Julian. Julian, where are you from? 
from here. All right. And who invited you? Oh, good, 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 good. Well, Julian, thank you very much. I'm delighted to see you. Tell us the name of the little angel in your arms. Juliana. God bless her. How old is she? Three. Jesus was three, just like your little girl. And as she rests so comfortably in your arms, let us realize this is how we should rest in the arms of God. Can you say amen? amen. God bless you. God bless your family. And God bless you so much that you become a blessing to someone else. Say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Please be seated and hold tightly to that little angel. Now, if you're from Baytown, Laporte, and you're not an Adventist, thank you for coming. I can't ask you to stand. If you're from Born Again, you're not a Seventh-day Adventist, thank you very much. I mean that with concentrated seriousness. We're always privileged to have guests among us. It is six minutes after that clock is bearing false witness. It is six minutes after one, after 12, after what? 12. After, oh, that thing says two or seven. This is a place of truth, not lies. I'll try to finish as soon as I can. I leave that up to the Spirit of God. But a pastor, may the Lord bless your work with the church. Acts 2, 47, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as in all, in all, whenever you do God's work, remember the power that changes a life is the power of God. The power that convicts a person of sin is the power of God. And the power that tells the devil back up is the power of God. We're just instruments in his hands. We are the wires through which divine power flows. Thank you, Pastor, for the honor of occupying this sacred desk. I'm really grateful. Somewhere I read in Ellen White's writings, angels occasionally ask God to let them preach. And he tells them no. He reserves that for people made of dirt such as I. And so I am aware that as I stand in this pulpit, I am doing something angels are eager to do and so I thank God we will be here for two weeks I hope you'll come bring your friends try to bring your enemies as well and let the gospel make them your friends because the gospel makes us friends to God we're enemies of God by nature I didn't say God is our enemy we are enemies of God by nature Romans 5 10 while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So the gospel changes enemies into friends. So bring them. If you cannot bring them, pray for them. But remember that God is not willing that any should perish. Thanks again. Our subject for this morning, if only you knew. What did I say? If only you knew. Before I get into the message, do three little things for me. They're quite simple. One preserve reverence where you are. The fact that we're in a church building does not automatically mean that people are reverent. Um, God has allowed me to travel the world and sometimes we're not very reverent in God's presence. But preserve reverence, God likes that. And for those of you watching online, wherever you are, YouTube, Facebook, Zoom, whatever it is, God's holiness does not change because your connection is electronic. God is holy, whether in the desert with Moses, in the inner court with the high priest or on Zoom, God is holy and appreciates respect. Are you with me? So make sure that you are giving that reverence to God. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. That request is based on Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, which says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And the words of the Lord are powerful words. After all, they created heaven and earth. My words have no power, so I'll keep my opinions to myself and give you, Thus saith the Lord. So from time to time, say that prayer on my behalf. And favor number three, I want you to think as you listen. Yes, I said, think as you listen. Isaiah 1 18 come now let us reason together we serve a reasonable God the devil is unreasonable God is reasonable and so he says come now let us reason together Jeremiah 12 verse 5 if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee how then canst thou contend with the horses God is a reasonable God. He says, Use your common sense. 
If you cannot keep up with a man, how do you plan to keep up with a horse? Much of religion is common sense, guided by the Spirit of God. Somebody say amen for common sense. All right, if you're going to the gym to lose weight, and after three months you're 15 pounds heavier, well, stop and think. You know, something is not working. Are you with me? Stop. Reason. Something is not working. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for life. Thank you, God, for freedom of worship. Thank you for clear minds. We're not in mental institutions. Thank you, Father, we're not imprisoned. Thank you, dear God, for health. And despite all the problems and trials we may have, we thank you that we're still able to come to your house. God, we thank you for that fountain of blood that still flows. Because of that, forgive us where we've sinned, particularly me. Cleanse me, dear God, that I might be a clean vessel for your use. Father in heaven, bless our guests who came to be with us in a very special way in this physical building and in the other churches that are connecting now. Put your words in my mouth, dear God. Speak through me, Father. Let me simply be an instrument in your hand. I offer no resistance. And God, let the Spirit speaking through me be the self-same Spirit enlightening your people. And if anyone listening to me, dear God, has contracted the coronavirus, I ask you in the name of Jesus who healed everyone who came to him, Touch that person, dear God, just to be merciful. Because your word says, he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Send the sunshine of your merciful healing. Send the raindrops of your favor, dear God. And heal those afflicted persons. Now, dear God, we commit this service to your glory and your glory alone. I pray from my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, amen. amen and amen. What's our subject? If only you knew. John chapter 4, reading from verse 7. I read from the King James Version of the Bible. John 4, reading from verse 7. This is a Seventh-day Adventist church. Don't take long to find the text. Have you found it? John 4, verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? Jesus answered and said unto her, now listen carefully to what Jesus said, if thou knewest the gift of God, what's our subject? If only you knew. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. We read verse 10 again, microscopically. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, meaning the woman was ignorant, because she did not know who Jesus was, that's why she said what she said in verse 9. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? She said that because she did not know Christ. Oh God. A lot of racial tensions result from the fact that two groups do not know each other. There is no interaction at schools, on the job, wherever, in the playground, and consequently there's mutual suspicion. Because I don't know you, I misbehave, and vice versa. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it was that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of me, and I would have given thee living water. It is essential that we know God. I was, uh, well, I often encounter people who are angry with God and are about to leave him. 
And as I frequently say, I have yet to meet someone who is angry with the devil and is about to leave him. When things go wrong, we leave God. The question becomes, when you leave God, where are you going? When you leave God, to whom are you going? And people leave God generally because they do not, finish my words for me, know God. What's our subject? If thou knewest. John 17 verse 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. We do not know God. We do not know Jesus. We do not know the Holy Spirit. Or we do not understand them as much as God would have us understand them. If we would understand God, we would realize that God does everything for our good. Let's see how far back God had you in mind. Matthew 25, reading from verse 31. Our subject, if only you knew. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading from what verse? Very good. Do you have it? Nobody answered the preacher. Oh, you have it. Okay. All right. Let me pray again. Holy Father, Please help me, possess me completely, that my voice becomes your voice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep, his sheep on the right hand, and the goats on the left. Now, 34, read microscopically. Then shall the king say unto them, where? On his right hand. Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, come on, prepared for you. Finish the verse. From the foundation of the world. That's before you were born. Come thou blessed of my father. Enjoy something I prepared for you before, finish my words, you were born. Listen to Revelation 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Finish the verse. Slain. Come on. From the foundation of the world. God had you in mind. Before you were born. And all his thoughts were, you're good. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading verses 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I want you to understand, there is a God who has been thinking of you and has planned a life for you before you were born. And every step in that life is a blessed step. God thinks no evil towards anyone. Come on, say amen. amen. Well, let the Bible say it, then you may say amen. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the th thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord. Come on. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Come on. To give you an expected end or a hope and a future the thoughts I think towards you says God are not evil even with the liquor in your hand my thoughts are not evil even with the condom in your wallet my thoughts toward you are not evil with the drugs coursing through your veins my thoughts toward you are not evil and if you understood that it may change your behavior On that cross, while Christ was suffering what had just been done to him, he looked at the people who had just done it, and he prayed, Father, forgive them, come on, for they know not what, he is looking out for their good. What's our subject? If only you knew. 
Go to Genesis 1. God is a good God. Somebody say amen. amen. Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. That's his habit. He can't be anything else but good. By the way, even when he destroys sinners, he'll be good. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1, reading verse 1. Do you have that? Well, you shouldn't have to go there. Come on. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, that is a summary statement. Let's look at some details. On day one, what did God make? This side. Too slow, that side. Light. On day two, this side. Too slow, that side. No. Firmament. Day three, that side, I come back to you in mercy. Day three, vegetation. What's wrong with you? Day four, don't hesitate, sun, moon, and stars. Day five, day five, fish and birds. Day six, land animals and humanity. Now, don't let me down. Day seven, Now listen to verse 31. Do you have it? And God saw everything that he had made. Finish for me. And behold, it was very good. That is the setting into which he placed Adam and Eve. The environment was very good. The source of food was very good the marriage arrangement he conducted was very good the face-to-face -face communication he enjoyed was very good God looked out for the good of Adam and Eve and he has not changed God could have made Adam on day one before food was made are you with me food was made on day three the fruit trees he could have made him on day one he made it on day six when the oxygen he needed was in place the beauty of the land the flowers the grass was in place the sunlight was in place food was in place everything necessary was in place then God made him why because God always looks out for your good there are no exceptions Go to John 6. John 6, our subject, if only you knew, is 23 minutes after 12. I'll let you, down, I'll let you out as soon as I can. I have a church family at uh, Baytown, Laporte, and Born Again. We're with you, and I know you're with us. What book did I say? John. What chapter? 6. Reading for what verse? I didn't give it. Verse 5. That man is paying attention. Verse 5. Before I go on, let me pray again. Father, continue to direct this service to your glory exclusively and also for our blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When Jesus then lift up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now read verse 6 with me. And this he said... To prove him, come on, for he himself knew what he would do. When did Christ know what he would do? Before the crisis. There is a crisis waiting for you, perhaps this week. Are you following me? Apply John 6, 6 to your life. God already knows what he'll do. But you and I have to cooperate. He himself knew what he would do. Let's look at hardship and see how hardship is used by God for our good. Deuteronomy chapter 8, let's read from verse 1 our subject. If you only knew, or if only you knew, you can choose the arrangement you like. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading from what verse? 1. The first five books were written by Moses. So when Jesus talks about Moses, he's usually referring to the first five books. You have Deuteronomy 8. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live. Stop. Let's look at that, a digression. 
Listen to the words again. All the commandments which I command you this day, shall you what? Observe, what does that mean? Give me one word for that. Obey. Now, here is the result of obedience. Keep reading. That ye may live. Stop. Obedience is life. Ah, I'm talking to myself. Obedience is life. So Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 6. She that liveth in pleasure or he is dead while he liveth. There is a way to be physically alive but in every other way dead. There is a life only Christ can give. And so the Bible says, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which I swear unto your fathers. Verse 2, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. To do what? To humbly come on and to prove thee to know what was in thy heart. Stop. Have you ever seen a pneumatic drill? And he's fixing the road, these guys with this. The, it, that's, the, the, the thing is hard, so you need a pneumatic drill. You can't use a little thing you use in your garden. You need a pneumatic drill. That's the way the carnal nature is. And God has to drill through it. So he uses hardship sometimes. But it's for our good. Amen. And he humbled thee. And suffered thee to hunger. And fed thee with manna. Which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know, we're in verse 3, that man, what? Doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now let's go to verse 16. We just read in 3, he humbled thee, suffered thee to hunger. All right, verse 3. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thou fought thy fathers knew not, that he might... Humble thee. That's verse 16. That he might to do what? Prove thee. Finish the verse. To do thee good. Come on. At thy latter end. The purpose of the trials in the wilderness were for the good of the Israelites. I have never heard of a pleasant surgical procedure. I've never heard of a delightful injection. It was for the good. If only you knew that God always acts for the good of his people, and that's you. Go to Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah 24. We read verse 5. Jeremiah 24, reading verse 5. Our subject, if only you knew. Jeremiah is addressing a people under the thumb of Nebuchadnezzar. And God told them, submit to Nebuchadnezzar, by the way. God was very serious. Submit to him because he's my servant. That's what God said in chapter 27 of Je Je uh, Je Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive in, uh, of Canaan, of um, Judah. Whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans. Finish the verse. For the good. God is always acting for our salvation. He sent them into captivity for the good. God may take your job for your good. young man wrote me this morning very nice fellow on the other side of the world I'm losing my confidence in God his promises no longer mean anything to me and um, praying seems useless and uh, statements like that and I wrote back to him and I said what was your point for praying and what was your point for believing the promises why do you pray to God as a means of controlling God's behavior 
so that God does whatever you faith is not believing God will do whatever I say faith is believing God will do whatever he says let me say that again faith is not believing God will do whatever I say faith is believing God will do whatever he says let me show you how good God is what I'm about to say is a little harsh but I'll say it. but it's biblically harsh God owes you okay All right. there you go you saved me from the guillotine God owes you come on nothing but he wants to give you everything we pray as if God is indebted to us let me say it again God owes me and you nothing but death <laughs> that's what we deserve are you with me through Christ he has given us everything because God says I know the thoughts I think toward you said the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end a blessed future a hope something to look forward to God is always looking out for the good of his people for the good of everyone when God called Abraham God had more than Abraham in mind. He had the good of the world. Because God cannot think evil. Are you with me? Let me tell you, God cannot entertain evil thoughts. Go to Genesis 12. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject, if only you knew. Genesis chapter what? Reading from what verse? The verses we're about to read are about the most, some of the most significant verses in the entire Bible. In my humble assessment. Do you have Genesis 12? Nobody answered the preacher again. This is becoming a habit. What verse did I say we begin with? One. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be, come on, a blessing. Keep reading now. And I will bless them that bless thee, come on, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee, finish the verse, shall all families of the earth be blessed. When God called Abraham, God had the world in mind. Because God is always looking out for your good because that's the way he is and so Jesus said to that woman at the well if thou knewest the gift of God if you knew who I am where I came from what I represent why I'm here and come tonight to find out why Jesus came come tonight you would have asked me for water and I would have given you water from which you would never thirst. My brothers and sisters, we do not know God as we ought. Do this little experiment for me on your own time. Go to a concordance. Look up the word ignorant in the New Testament particularly and see how many times you read, I would not have you to be ignorant. Then look up the word no, K-N-O-W. How many times Paul says what? Do you not know? Do you not know? Do you not know? Knowest thou not? My people are perished, or they perish, why? For lack of knowledge. And the lack of knowledge that destroys us is a lack of the knowledge of God and his love for us. And so the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, God had one begotten son, and he gave him. Christ was not loaned to the world. Finish my words. Christ is not a loan. Come on. He's a gift. Permanent. Now, when God gave Christ, God had nothing else. He gave the creator of heaven and earth. 
He gave someone equal with himself. He gave not only the one who created, he gave the one who sustains creation. When God gave Christ, he gave everything. Had nothing left. For God so loved the world. Now, let's look at God's goodness again. When God made heaven and earth, Genesis 1, at the end of creation week, was God dead or alive? Alive. Which means it did not cost the life of God to create heaven and earth. Ah, you're not with me. You're with me? It did not cost God his life. Yes, he gave of his life to creation. He did not give up his life for salvation. Hmm? Are you with me? For salvation, God gave up his life through his humanity. Because divinity can't die. But God had to find a way to die. He became human and by that avenue he gave up his life. And so Jesus told John the Revelator in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead. Listen carefully to me. Let me pray again. Fathers, I slide the downward slope of this message. Tighten your grip on my faculties. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Here is creation. Here is salvation. Let me modify my words. Here is creation. Here is you. It cost more to save you than to create the universe. That is a God looking out for your good. If only you knew let me say it again it cost god more to save one person than to create heaven and earth why do i say one what man of you having an hundred sheep if he lose come on one of them doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which was lost until he find it. In other words, when he found it, it's just the shepherd and the sheep. Salvation is not a crowd affair. It's a one-on-one -on -one affair. Jesus died for you. It's nice of you to think he died for the person next to you. He died for you. Personally. So when I say it costs more to save you than to create the universe, I am talking to you. Mind, character, and personality, volume 2, page 423, paragraph 2. The gospel deals with individuals. Each person has an individuality distinct and separate from all others. Everyone has a soul to save or to lose. Each must believe for himself, repent for himself, be convicted for himself, be converted for himself. Jesus Christ had your good in mind and he died for you. If only you knew that there's a God in heaven who is always looking out for your best. When you understand that, can you trust a God like that? Yes. If you've got a friend who's borrowing money and always refusing to pay, moving to another city, can you trust that person? No. If someone donates a kidney to you, can you trust that person? Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, we love him, finish my words, because, come on, he first loved us. God could have put upon us an impossibility. Show me your love first, then I will respond. But a carnal person cannot show love, as God requires it. So God acts first. That's another thing to know about God. God must act first. And I'm coming to the end. Listen to Genesis, not Genesis, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That's before the world was made. That he gave his only begotten son. That's before Adam sinned. God acts first and as i said always for our good my brother my sister there is a god who has a personal interest in your life 
right where you sit and he wants to redirect your life in a path he has laid out for you will that path have trials yes will it have tribulations yes but they're designed finish my words for your good football players will tell you i've never you listen to them on interviews they don't like training camp hmm? or basketball play because it's rough it's hard you, you work hard getting ready for the regular season. It's hard, but it's for their good. When someone has suffered a stroke and has to learn to walk again, it's hard. Are you following me? And they walk between these two bars, and, but they do it, they do it, and then the walking ability returns. But the attempt was hard, but it was for their good. We serve a God who always looks out for our good. And I'll tell you something, and I'll close. Here is Jesus. Here is you. Who went to the cross? Jesus. That you might not have to go. Let me say it differently. You did not get what I said. Christ in Gethsemane, he sweat blood from his skin. It was so rough, God had to send an angel, Luke twenty two forty three, 43, to strengthen him because he almost went back. That's what we deserve. But he put it on Jesus because he's looking out for your good. Hmm? What did Christ say on the cross? My God, my God, come on. Now, Jesus didn't lie. The father forsook him for a while. But the father had a choice, forsake Jesus or forsake you. For God so loved the world, come on. Here's the world, here his son. For God so loved the world. Personalize that, for God so loved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whether you have no education, you go to a... Uh, the welfare office for food stamps it makes no difference to God he loved you so much he gave up Jesus now the only way to please God is by faith can you believe that that God has your best interest at heart you know your parents do what about God let me close I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord. Finish the verse for me. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end or a hope and a future. There is a God who is always looking out for your good. And if only you and I knew that, it would change our behavior towards him. For we love him because he first loved us how many will say with me father thank you for looking out for my best interest can i see your right hand my best interest can i see that hand stand up with me they'll ask you to do a favor for god not for me for god we are on the edge of a serious time of trouble I have ceased to grieve very much because of funerals. Because I've, can, I've known from the Bible, from the writings of our servant, Ellen White, God is putting his people to sleep. Because they will not be able to endure what's coming. So if God in his mercy put my mother to sleep, I'm not fussing with God. Are you following me? And there's a lot of death in the attitude. Someone wrote me, I don't remember from where, said, a lot of the members are dying. God is putting them to sleep. Because the times that are coming upon us will be hard. But you see, we are preparing for life in a world where sin will never rise again. So we have to decide now with all our heart and soul, come on, and mind and strength i want nothing to do with sin so god can seal that and it will last for eternity and beyond jesus said thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind with all thy strength now 
who would like to recommit the life to God and say, Father, in so far as I can, I recommit my life to you with all my heart and soul. Can I see your right hand? I recommit my life to you as far as I can. Hands down, head bowed. Father, we can only go so far in our humanity. But we thank you today, God, in your mercy, you make up for our shortcomings. We stand to say we recommit our lives to a God who always has our good in mind. Father, you have no evil thoughts toward us. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5, thinketh no evil. Dear God, forgive us for questioning your love. Forgive us, dear God, for doubting your desire to save us, even though we frequently say the Lord is not willing that any should perish. In the name of Jesus, dear God, forgive us for lack of faith. Forgive us for saying one thing, but living differently. And having heard the message, if only you knew, dear God, we have recommitted our lives to you. And Father, day by day, through the power and ministry of the word, let us hold tightly to you, knowing that whether it rains or it shines or it snows or it floods, you have our best good in mind. Ah, God, hasten the day when this desire for our good will flourish into a place in your eternal kingdom. Until then, keep us faithful today. I pray for my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated.